everyone. Um, I would like to call to order the May meeting of the Board of Directors. Um, and we will start off with a Pledge of Allegiance from our special guest, um, Paddle Hurley, correct? So um, we will just, if you'll start us, we will follow you. Make sure your, oh, your sound is on. Oh, okay, it is. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. I wonder if, um, thank you, Paddle. You're welcome. Thank you. I wonder if next time we should mute ourselves and just listen to Pat and just listen Maybe. to mm -hmm. It's a little complicated. Right. <laughs> um, Alan, you want to do roll call for us? Okay. Nika Weisman. Here. Megan Hurley. Here. Kim Hudson. Here. Justin Eichmann. Here. Katrina Osborne. Here. Tracy Pomeroy. Here. Keaton Smith. Here. Okay, thank you. Um, then we don't have, we're not doing recognitions tonight, am I right? Yeah. Correct, no, we're not. Okay, and, and we received no citizen participation requests. No participation that I know of either. Okay, well then we are going to move right on into, um, we have a liaison report from Justin Eichmann who has been kind enough to um, step in as our uh, go-to board member with regard to um, all of these construction projects um, that are being financed by the bond restructure. Um, Jennifer has a document that I'm going to ask her to share with us. Um, I can't remember what we called it, that um, Justin is going to walk us through some of that. I think we called it updates, Jennifer. Um, and if you'll just, I think he'll be able to add some narrative to that that'll make it um, make more sense. But as you have questions, feel free to interject or you can save them to the end. We're gonna talk about the uh, timeline a little bit after he gets through these, um, these updates. So take it away, Justin. Thank you, Nika. Um, Board, uh, these are simply my notes, um, and so any mistakes on here are, 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 are mine, but I was putting together um, sort of the, the, the group of issues that we're dealing with in this, in this category, and uh, it's, it's kind of complicated. Uh, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things that are going on. So I was trying to organize it and, um, and reached out to Nika and, and asked her if, uh, she thought it might be helpful if I just uh, shared it so I don't necessarily have to read every single thing on here. I think uh, a lot of this is gonna be stuff that you guys know, but some things I think uh, may be uh, new information and it just might be helpful uh, if, um, if you were able to, to look at the notes. So, so here they are and um, there are a number of things uh, uh, going on under this category and uh, the way I've grouped them is first with the ongoing projects that we have that are separate and apart from the bond election. And uh, those are the phase three of the parking lot project. Uh, the previous two phases uh, uh, were completed. And this is the one that goes behind the administration building. It's been very tricky uh, because of uh, uh, approvals we were having to get from the university to use um, a part of that, that drive or ingress and egress. And, um, that did not happen. Uh, they did not take that up. So we had to, the district had to change course uh, in their um, in their design, but uh, did want to um, alert this my understanding that'll be coming back uh, before us in, in, in June. Um, and that uh, this involves a redesign. So it's a different uh, uh, bit of a different beast. Um, and then the second item obviously is the food service and transportation buildings. Um, which uh, uh, 
I understand the work's underway and they've been having to deal with a lot of rain delays, rain, rain days that are, uh, uh, that have delayed the project, but uh, 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 the work is continuing and being phased to kind of uh, address the higher priority parts of that project uh, uh, first, but, uh, uh, but that, is, that is well underway. Uh, the second item has to do with the um, approval of the March, the May 12th sale of the bonds, which is on our agenda for, uh, uh, for later today. Um, the third category being uh, the, the land purchase uh, for the new building on the west side of I-49. Uh, that is also on our agenda as an old uh, business action item uh, for, uh, uh, for today. Uh, and then the fourth being uh, the bond projects um, uh, that we have, that we've um, undertaken. And, uh, you know, we break those out between uh, the FCA and the new facilities. And under the FCA there, you can see uh, the, the, uh, generally kind of broke it down the FCA projects as the district has, has broken those down for the purposes of um, uh, getting the, the uh, statement of qualifications uh, for architects and construction management firms. But that works in a group together in sort of logical areas being Leverett and Washington work grouped in, in one area, the uh, uh, Ramey and Woodland uh, uh, work um, and uh, the, uh, the FCA, the kind of district-wide FCA um, work. And where we are on that um, uh, timeline is that the approval for the construction managers and architects um, for all of the FCA work is on our agenda tonight as a uh, old business item. And uh, one of the things that I have talked to um, uh, administration about and, uh, with, with Nika is that once we get the design team on board, um, with so many different parts of this FCA projects taking place, it'd be real helpful f to have a uh, project management charts for each of the projects uh, that, that are put together so we can uh, uh, get an idea of the, the work and the timelines. It's, it's, it's complicated. I mean, obviously there's a lot that's involved in, in all of those projects that, that um, are, are district-wide. Um, and of course then, uh, along with those projects, once uh, uh, once the design and construction team comes together uh, is to get monthly updates on the progress um, uh, from team representatives or administration on, 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 on these items. So that'll be a big part that's uh, gonna get started here pretty soon this summer, which is, which is pretty exciting. Uh, and then the second part of that is uh, new facilities. And uh, of course, part of our bond election progress, uh, uh, vote in uh, February uh, included um, a new facility for the west side of, of, of I-49 and we have the, the land purchase for that um, on the agenda as mentioned earlier, um, but uh, um, also have the construction of the, the new facility as well as the um, new athletic facility work at, at Fable High School. So we have two new facilities along with, um, uh, that are slated to come online along with the FCA work um, at our May 13th workshop, so just a few weeks ago, we heard um, presentations from architects and construction management firms uh, who uh, uh, had a, a period of time to uh, not only talk to us about uh, their firm's um, uh, experience and qualifications for, uh, for this work, um, but also to, to take questions. Um, I think in general, uh, this probably my own uh, sense that, that, that very pleased that the applicants were and the people, the firms that we heard from were all very well qualified uh, and very good presentations. Um, the general areas of questions from board members uh, focused on uh, availability of the firms, uh, the prioritization, the ability to prioritize our work. I think um, these projects are, are big enough and, and significant enough that, that uh, that we should be a blue chip client for um, uh, architect and uh, uh, construction management firms that are doing our work. And, uh, um, uh, but also with the workload, what other type of jobs do they, do these firms have uh, going on? Would there be any conflict with being able to do our work? Um, and so the, uh, I think on our agenda uh, today is um, the 
administration recommendations for uh, uh, those professionals. Um, and that is a new business item. So it'll be in our June meeting for, uh, uh, for old business. Um, and, uh, um, and so we have that, that component of it as well. So um, I think kind of the next step um, in line with, with that work is um, so how we engage on project scope, the definition of the project, the design work. Uh, and obviously it's a challenge. Uh, typically we would be in a, uh, a workshop room at, at administration building and being able to get everybody there and, uh, uh, in the same room and having these discussions. And so um, I think we really have to think about how we're going to um, um, accomplish this, this task now. Um, and I have a few suggestions that maybe the board can weigh in on, um, on, on how we might get this done. Um, the first being um, that uh, with regard to new facilities that we hold um, or conduct a, a board workshop in around the, the J July timeframe, depending on how uh, timing works, um, where we work on the definition of the new facilities and, and uh, that we have, the, the new school and the, the new athletic facilities. And obviously the, the design team needs to be on board to do that. And this would be sort of higher level discussions on um, um, really kind of the, the, the scope of the, the larger scope of the, the project. We felt, um, at least I believe it'd be important for us to weigh in um, at that stage. And then uh, once we've had some board and administration discussion on um, project definition, project scope, uh, that around the August timeframe, uh, we start to have some uh, concept um, brought back before us from the design team and it would be appropriate then to, to do the same, to have another workshop uh, for each of the new facilities on, um, um, on design concepts. Um, and then thirdly, at that point, to um, uh, have the ability to have presentation and discussion with um, staff and patrons, um, as we've done in um, other projects uh, in, in, in the past. Um, with the design team and, and, and administration and being able to, you know, starting to uh, uh, discuss some of those uh, design elements and, and uh, components of, of these new facilities uh, to get staff and public um, uh, input. Uh, and then um, uh, along with that to also have, along with FCA uh, monthly updates, to have monthly updates as we go from design team on, on new, um, uh, new facilities. So those are some um, just general items for the next couple months that I think would be helpful if we had that July and August um, work sessions on the definitions and the concepts and then built in for the, um, really for the late summer fall for you know, those concepts to be presented and have input um, with, uh, uh, you know, with the staff and, and, and public who will be interested, certainly um, the teachers and, 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 and parents and, and community members who would be in that area for sure. Um, number five on that list um, is something else that thought that might be real helpful. Uh, linked into the uh, uh, documents here on Board Docs is also uh, the project timeline uh, that Nika started with um, uh, Dr. Slocum, um, and um, that's sort of a, uh, a, a start, but I think it would be helpful if we had administration kind of work on that, taking that as a guide, and populate that with, um, uh, now that the design team will be coming on board with, with some of these in the next couple months to include project, um, uh, overall project course and deadlines, um, when board workshops may fall on uh, with regard to certain areas of, of, of work and, and the staff and patron presentation discussion times um, as well in general, knowing of course that these aren't rigid deadlines, these are just sort of um, uh, flexible and where, where they might fall. But I think having that overall sort of uh, timeline is gonna be pretty key, uh, especially now since we're continuing to work remotely um, it's very hard to kind of have that transparency and understanding about the project without 
having these sort of visual um, uh, visual aids, and, and I think this would be good for the public too, to be able to sort of track and follow where we are. Um, and, uh, uh, and then of course, once uh, the project team is, is together, uh, just like the FCA is get those um, uh, project management charts for the new facility work as well. That's a more detailed kind of overview of all the aspects of the of the project that have to take place and those timelines and how that works. So, I mean, we're going to be juggling a lot of timelines at once for a whole lot of projects. And I think keeping that separate um, uh, and understanding how they work together is going to be uh, a, a, a pretty big, uh, pretty big challenge. So I think we sort of need those visual representations. And then lastly, um, kind of following from um, the, the timeline that Nika had worked on, but also uh, kind of knowing what we have coming forward is this is really gearing up for a lot of the design work to take place this fall, uh, probably into the early, um, uh, early winter. Um, and then at some point, once that design work is, is done, that concept, that the design team has to go and and prepare construction plans, and that takes a, a good bit of time as well. And it might be at that time in 2021, say the spring of 20, 2021, or maybe even a little later, that we can transition them from this design work on these new facilities to um, uh, discussion about uh, 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 demographics, uh, school capacities, and further work on existing facilities, and that we can um, establish uh, a process, board involvement, public involvement uh, at that time. So no, in other words, kind of get through this first wave of work, uh, which is going to be a challenge in and of itself with the way we have to uh, do these things now. Um, and once we're beyond that, uh, kind of step into the next phase, which uh, would be in, in spring of 2021. 20, so uh, Nika, that's what, um, that's what I had. And I kind of uh, stepped into your timeline quite a bit. I'm going to ask you your thoughts on on um, what you felt about those those suggestions. Am I unmuted? No. Yes. I am. Okay. Um, thank you, Justin. Um, I just wanted to make a couple of comments, and I know board members will probably have some questions or need some clarification, but. Um, as Justin was talking about the July workshop being an opportunity for definition, I just wanted to remind everyone we, you know, we haven't even decided, as Dr. Dr. Colbert and I were talking about this earlier today, we, we have yet to even decide what kind of school we're building. So it's those broader types of questions that, that we need to solidify um, before we move forward and and allow the public to, you know, weigh in with regard to, you know, specific um, questions or suggestions or just input that they would like to contribute. Um, we we had a similar process that we used when we built Happy Hollow that um, allowed, you know, uh, interested community members and staff members to. Um, weigh in uh, with the architects, uh, which actually is a useful um, part of the process for the architects as they're trying to um, get some direction in their design. So, the, but the definition, when you look at, um, I think, I don't know, I'm trying to look at everybody's faces so I can't go back and forth, but Jennifer, are you sharing the timeline up there? Or can you be? Yeah, there it is. Okay. Um, so if you look at the um, the timeline, um, we've we've kind of worked our way through May. <clears throat> We're here now, um, being asked to uh, approve the the CMs and architects for all of those things we called other projects. Um, and then June will be asked to approve the CMs and architects. Um, they'll be recommended tonight, but we'll finalize the, those approvals um, potentially in, at our June meeting. And 
then they're able to move forward with the contracts. But in July, you'll see it says their definition of new school project in high school athletic facilities. And that'll be, so I think what Justin is suggesting there is a, a workshop for the board to talk about those, that, that very broad definition of what these buildings actually are meant to accomplish and who they, who they're meant to serve, how many they're meant to serve, those kinds of questions that we need to um, get nailed down. But then um, in August, you'll see it says conceptual planning, and that's when it gets more into um, design features, um, how the building, um, how the building will do what we've asked it to do, if that makes sense. Um, and so I think the idea that you're suggesting, Justin, of doing uh, having a workshop for the board both of those months to just um, have some conversation and actually reach some decisions in July, maybe August would be more of an opportunity to just have a back and forth with the, with the architects that we have hired. Um, and then also putting something on the calendar for the public in August. So I just wanted to elaborate on those. And, and I do feel like um, this, this tool right here, we're going to kind of ask admin to add to it as much as they can um, so that we as a board can understand, even though it's going to be a flexible document, um, that, but the more that, the more specific, specifics we can have on this it will help us as a board to understand where and when we get to discuss what um, and so um, even though it's very sketchy right now I think even when we come back to our um, June workshop we'll have a lot more detail or we're asking admin to help us create a lot more detail under these um, headings so does anyone have any questions uh, and Nika, this is Tim. Uh, not any particular questions. I, I appreciate uh, uh, the combination of what you and uh, Dr. Slocan worked on and, and uh, Justin is taking it the next steps. This is very similar to really most every other project that I've been associated with, whether it's a renovation of a school or, or a brand new construction. Um, you know, the board as the elected body uh, representing our, our patrons and citizens um, we need to settle on the design of uh, the, the scope of a project um, and provide, you know, some of those uh, parameters to the uh, architects and other folks that are involved in the uh, coming up with the concept. And I, I think all this, uh, it's a ton of work and, and I, I trust all of the folks we're working with will uh, be great listeners as they all have said they will be um, to take what seven of us, let alone all the, uh, administrative folks and staff uh, building leaders and so forth but i think this um this process um, and proposal kind of layout here um accomplishes a lot of what we we need it to do uh, regardless of of our our meeting limitations um, such as they are okay yeah megan um I agree with everything that Tim said. I'm curious about where we are in terms of thinking about what, I know community participation and facilitating that well is always a challenge, even when we can be together like regular human beings. Um, it looks like we're looking at, at August as the first time that we attempt to do that. And I think we all know that we don't know where we're gonna be in terms of being able to be together then. Um, what are, where are we in thinking about process for that and venue and like platform whatever however we want to talk about about that i think i think those are really good questions um to be honest we haven't had any conversation about it. what are, what are your thoughts justin have you i i've had some um experience with uh over the last couple of months now dealing with uh comprehensive plans that cities have been working on that where you have lots of public engagement and uh, uh, those had to be moved on to virtual platforms and uh, with, with varying degrees of success, but the architects and uh, uh, engineers and construction companies have, have 
kind of gotten quite a bit uh, uh, used to uh, to doing that. Not that that's the best platform, but if if that's what we're left with having to do, that that may be the case. In the, in the past, I remember um, with Happy Hollow, I was not on the board at the time. It was right before I became on the board, but I went to one of the meetings at Happy Hollow, and it was at a, in the larger space there, and, and uh, administration was there with uh, uh, the design team and uh, for the for the presentation, and that's the obviously the the easier environment to to have those type of discussions. So um, I'm I'm not sure if we're gonna be able to figure out how that's gonna look like um, right now, but there no. is the online. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I know that's not something we're going to solve in this meeting. I just feel like that process is, was already a concern, I know, for all of us, because I know that all of us want to do that really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm just, yeah, I'm not, I guess I'm not, I'm not looking for answers. I just want to make sure that we're all. Do you have, do you have an opinion? <laughs> no. no, I think that's, that's part of why I'm asking. Like when I have an opinion, I'm like, this is how we need to, and I, I don't, I don't have a, yeah. I, I, I just, I feel like it's a concern for everyone and a concern for the community. And I, I know that when we look back at this project, that, that making sure that community involvement is um, accessible is just such a big, big deal in this town as it should be. And so um, I guess I'm, I'm curious about, about like what, what admin can bring to the table. And I know Justin has a lot of access to that through work, but like what, what other districts are doing. I mean, we're not the only ones who are in this boat and to kind of reach out to professional networks and see, give us, give ourselves options to maybe talk about when we get together in June or July or whatever. I think oh. Megan, I, uh, yeah. Madam President, may I, yeah, we have been thinking about that as well and concerned about that issue about how to do that. I know that you can do Zoom meeting session with different groups, you know, and I'm, we have a task force and I was real pleased how that worked out. So we can be creative about how we can set up different uh, uh, Zoom meetings for different sections of the town for people to join and we can do it on a smaller scale to get their input and, and we keep that session with uh, about three different groups, what we've been thinking. So we, we're going to think a lot about that and bring some a proposal back to the board and, and as we continue, the board continue to look at that and decide on how they're allowed to present this to the public and get through it. <clears throat> Thank you, Jenna. Also, if um, I don't know who's watching this incredibly fascinating show on TV right now, but if anybody in the community has ideas about that, I would welcome suggestions from anybody who's got it, you know? So. And then at that time also, you know, we may can uh, come together in small groups uh, face to face, you know, because right now uh, we are allowed to uh, meet up to 50 people so we can again, decide on, hey, we can do different meetings, smaller meetings to uh, get the input from the uh, community. Yeah. Go ahead, Justin. Megan, I just want to say I, I agree with, with what you said. My, um, from the outside looking in, when Happy Hollow was being um, designed, I think there was a lot of benefit to the project that was, and, and buy-in that was brought uh, through those those meetings uh, with the uh, with the staff. and. Um, the public and I, th I think we need to be creative and uh, figure out how we're going to do that because that's an important part of this project. Um, so uh, to me, any option would be on the table. I think we need to have some um, conversation about that. I don't, I don't have an answer. I mean, then the, the problem is things are changing so much um, from week to week that it's hard to know. Um, what July, definitely what August is going to look like, but I think um, we need to, you know, have at least a, a few weeks out, be able to look forward and create an option that is appealing to people and, and provides an opportunity for them to engage the conversation effectively. So thanks for bringing up that point. One other thing I wanted to mention is um, at that July meeting where we talk about definition and scope um, we are going to bring the templeton demographic company back and make sure that they're um, present to answer any questions provide any updates and whatnot we're, you know, we're due for an update on that anyway i think um, so they will be there 
Um, and I think that anybody else have questions about the timeline or comments? This is Keaton. A um, couple uh, comments. Um, the one um, virtual tool I've seen discussed for um, conferences that are going virtual um, that uh, we could look into more offline is uh, Hop In, H O P I N. Um, and um, I've just I've seen it come up a few times here recently, and um, so I'd be happy to explore that further um, as a potential virtual platform. But um, agree that it might be better to, uh, you know, at, at this point maybe maybe small group meetings would work as well. So, um, but uh, <clears throat> so just wanted to mention that and um, two other. Real quick comments. Um, I wonder what to what extent um, students and young people have been able to part been able to participate in the um, input um, process in the past and um, and whether um, whether there are maybe even more opportunities to to engage students this time around, um, knowing that they would probably have some some wonderful ideas that, that would be very challenging to make happen but um, but uh, um, they might also have some some great ideas um, and um, and then and then finally I uh, more of a general comment of in, in some of our um, previous discussions we've talked about the the FCA and maybe having like um, maybe there being like a little bit less uh, less interest or engagement. I just wanted to um, register my interest in, in the FCA work, not, not that it needs to be to the full extent of you know, the, the new facilities, um, but um, you know, for, for example, HVAC, I'm, I'm a, a nerd, as you all will remember, and, um, and so I would be, you know, I'm thinking about you know, efficiency and upfront costs versus up. Um, benchmarking and tracking of, of, of energy costs that I think could um, present some financial opportunities and, um, and savings for, for the district. So, um, just kind of wanted to maybe follow up on some previous conversations around around the FCA and and register my my interest in um, in being a little bit more in the weeds on on that than um, than uh, than the than the very very high level. Um, so um, that's all I had. No, I think that's that point is well taken, Keaton. I think. Um... I think one of the nice things about the fact that we're going to have so much going on around the district is that we're going to be getting updates regularly about all of the construction and all the different projects versus just occasional, you know, facility updates. We'll have them there at every single meeting. Um, and, you know, one of the things I thought about, we have an, idea, an item on the... Uh, calendar to, or on the agenda tonight that's from our board calendar um, and maybe we want to consider something a lot since we have sort of identified um, energy efficiency as a part of this whole um, initiative maybe we we want to add something to our board calendar for a more comprehensive update that is specifically focused on um, you know what what's happening in that regard i mean of course when you're just replacing the the hvac that would be premature to get any measurements but um if we have something like that established on our calendar down the road i think that would incentivize uh administration to you know start tracking that that's just one suggestion but but i agree with you i think we're we're making some pretty expensive you know changes 
that um, are going to enhance the efficiency of our district, and we'd like to know how they were enhanced. So I don't, I don't think that's all that nerdy. <laughs> nerdy yeah, I think there, I think there could be a great story to tell there. You know, um, we've got some baseline. Um, you know, we've got some baseline data of of what. Um, our historical spend has been, and we know we're adding HVAC to enhance comfort in some buildings, which is great. Um, but being able to tell the story of um, of some of the um, savings that are generated by some of these investments, I think, will be a big positive. I think I think a big positive, but also just really important. So, um, yeah, we will make note of that um, and maybe Dr. Colbert, we can look for a place to add that onto the uh, board calendar down the road. But also, I mean, they will be, they will be at every single meeting um, with updates and our engineers and construction managers. So it'll be a great opportunity for board members to keep, keep you know, asking those questions um, and, that, and, and providing that type of accountability. So, good point. Um, anyone else questions about this? I know um, this is not on the agenda, but um, Keaton let me know he does have a brief update as our city liaison. So I wanna make sure we uh, can work that in real quick. But before we move on to that, does anyone have any more comments or questions about the, uh, the construction projects? Uh, last thing I'll say um, is that, um, yes, we will all endeavor to provide opportunities for input. Um, and I'm quite certain that even without, if, if we don't do that perfectly, uh, we will garner plenty of input and people will have multiple opportunities uh, to weigh in, engage, um, uh, share thoughts and opinions. Um, and I think each of the professionals that we'll be working with uh, obviously will will want that they they need that type of input uh, before they start actually designing mm -hmm. so um, I, I, I don't have any doubt that we'll we'll have uh, a broad a broad array of thoughts and opinions shared with us yeah thank you Tim I agree with that okay um, then we will move on to Keaton has just a, I think a couple of comments with regard to his role as city liaison. Yeah, um, so just two quick uh, mentions. One is um, on the very good news around, um, on the good news front around city partnerships. Um, wanted to make the board aware that as part of our renovation um, at Alps that will create a new Head Start facility. Um, we did uh, a couple months ago receive a, um, we received $50,000 in CDBG community development block grant funding from the city of Fayetteville through their CDBG allocation that comes from the federal government. Um, and that helped us uh, um, fund the renovation of the Head Start at Alps. So wanted to highlight that uh, partnership. And then, um, and then secondly, just make the board aware that as a part of our, um, our uh, site um, conversation, the site we're, we considered last month and we're discussing this month, um, we'll likely need to go through a rezoning process um, that would, would go in front of the, of the city council. So um, just wanted to, um, just wanted to share that uh, and and have that on everyone's radar. So those are my two updates. Okay, thank you, Keaton. Any questions for Keaton on either of those points, comments? No? Okay, then we will move on to Dr. Colbert for the superintendent update. Yes, ma'am. Good evening and thank you very much, uh, Madam President and to the board members and to the public and, and the leadership team. 
Uh, as part of my update, uh, I have the honor to uh, announce the uh, Fayetteville Teacher of the Year for the 19, uh, 2019 and 2020 school year. Uh, it's my honor to recognize this person. I just want to just share a few uh, facts about her and, and what she uh, has done and to give her this title. You know, she began uh, teaching at Holcomb Elementary back in 2004 as a PE teacher. Uh, she says that, you know, her uh, trip has been miraculous because of the fact all the things that she has gone through and also all that great support that she has gotten from other people. And then uh, it's in interesting to see her, uh, her path to becoming a, a great leader that she is right now. You know, she began as an aide and then became, became a certified teacher and then uh, completed a master program in educational leadership. And as you can see, she is a lifelong learner. And she says she loves Holcomb and the, uh, this district, uh, the students and their families, because she got to be involved in many ways there and trying to know the heart of the school. Uh, she's been really blessed with a profession that is perfect for a fit for her. And uh, she's passionate not only about teaching kids, this is what really stood out about her. She's not only passionate about teaching kids uh, the skills and knowledge necessary for a lifelong time of fitness, but also about academic growth and social and emotional development. So it just shows you that she's a well-rounded uh, individual and a teacher who believe in looking at the whole child. And then she goes on to say that she's been very involved with the build, uh, on different committees at the building, all the way from R RTI, Leadership Discipline Crisis, and also Leader in Me, Public Relationship Committee, and she's also done fundraisers for United Way and also the Jump Rope for Heart and then substituted as the administrator at Holcomb when the principal was out. And on the district level, she's, she has served on different committees and given back uh, to the uh, district because, again, like she said, she loved her district and she would go beyond the call of duty to do those different things. And she's uh, part of their expired administrator and cohort and also lead district PD uh, sessions. Uh, she has also uh, written different grants to bring money into the district to help support the different programs that she's involved with. And so, and so with that, as you see, she just uh, has gone beyond the call of duty to try to give back to the district as well as making sure that she does a great job in working with students and also volunteering throughout the city. So it's my honor to recognize the 19, I mean 2019-2020 Teacher of the Year for Federal Public School, that is Miss. Tana Dawson. And so Tana, if you just click, you can move up. And so we can see you. We want to say congratulations. She's here with us. Thank you very much. Tana, want to say hello? Yes. Hello to the school board. Thank you so much. I'm just unbelievably honored and humbled by this. Um, I want to first thank you all for everything you do for our district. Um, I know Mrs. Osborne, she's a Holcomb parent, and um, I couldn't do what I do without the support of a whole lot of people. Uh, Dr. Colbert, probably beginning with you for having the confidence in me to hire me uh, a few years ago. Yeah. Um, uh, Holcomb PE is a team effort. There's a team in the gym, not just me, and uh, we love what we do. We love our kids, and we're ready for uh, COVID to be over <laughs> so we can... <laughs> Thank you so much. I'm so honored. Thank you, Tana. We appreciate you all that you do. So thank you. Okay, so the next thing I just, just like, like to announce, and since you spoke uh, Corona Valley's been over it, uh, you know, today was the last day of school for those students on the traditional calendar. So they finished, picked up uh, the items and turned in different items today. So that went over well. I went tried to go by all the schools to see that in progress. So that was really working very well. And then the last day for the CLC schools will be next Thursday, June the 4th. So we'll be saying bye to them on next uh, Thursday, June the 4th. And then uh, the one last thing is that uh, I want the board to know that, uh, you know, as we get ready to plan and, and reflect upon this semester and also start thinking about uh, what school is going to look like for next year, I want you to know that we have commissioned a uh, task force uh, to bring together uh, teachers, administrators, parents, and community leaders just to give us their input about, hey, what 
what did they experience? How did that work for them? What are some of the things we need to consider as we get ready to reopen school in August? So I look forward to working with this group. They met Wednesday night and we got some good input from them about uh, their experiences and, and what transpired. So my goal was to make sure that we can have a broad section of people, not just teachers, but also parents, because they really were a very important part of this process. So they all were there giving us their input. And so the next meeting, it would be June the 10th. We try to break it up and, and recognize that some parents can, and teachers can do it during the day and even so we have a June the 10th, we're gonna have a group meeting at 10 a.m. and then another group meeting at 6 p.m. Uh, for us to get their in, input about, hey, what is it that we need to be thinking about how school is gonna look like when we open up in August? Because you know, it's gonna be different. It's not gonna be the same. So therefore we need to start thinking now about what is that gonna look like. So I'm looking forward to hearing their input and all. So once we get all that and compile all the information, then of course I'm gonna present that to the board so that you all can also talk about and discuss it and then hopefully have, we would have a plan in place about how we're going to reopen school uh, this August. And also, are we going to be, be, uh, be prepared if we have to do AMI, uh, uh, throughout the year. So we're going to have all that in, uh, laid out and making sure that we are prepared to address those issues there. So, and then the last thing I want to say, thank you to all the staff members, students, and parents and community for all that they have done to make this a very successful semester. Uh, it's been kind of uh, hard, but we did it as a group and everyone really uh, chimed in and did their part to make sure that we were still providing a quality education for our students. So thank you very much, and thank you for that opportunity, Madam President. Thank you, Dr. Colbert, um, and thank you for being here, Tana. We appreciate your joining our Zoom meeting, um, and we just appreciate your service at Holcomb. Over, and I read your story about how long you've been a part of this district, so that's quite an asset to have someone who grew up here and attended these uh, our schools to now be serving our kids. So we're grateful to you. Thank you uh, so much. Mm -hmm. um, so moving on to the consent agenda, um, I did want to mention one thing here. Um, as you'll notice um, under some of the staff changes that we, we have several retirements that we, we typically recognize in May, well, is it May or April? I can't remember, in the spring, we typically have a banquet to recognize our retirees and unfortunately weren't able to do that due to the pandemic. So, um, but Dr. Colbert has assured me that we're working on some way to um, thank those special teachers that are retiring from the district. Um, and we we're, we haven't figured it out completely yet, but we will have that opportunity. So I wanted to make sure you all were aware of that. But otherwise, uh, I would entertain a motion to accept the consent agenda as presented, or if there's um, an individual item that you would like to pull out, that would that would be an option as well. Yeah, I move we adopt the consent agenda as presented. Um, although there are some of those teachers, retirees that I would, I would just soon uh, remove by a uh, line item veto. Uh, apparently I don't have that authority. So no. um, we'll accept it as presented. Okay. Second. We have, we have a motion from Tim and a second from Megan. Is there any discussion from the board? Um, see and all those in favor say aye 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 all opposed say no okay the motion carries seven to zero all right now let's see don't forget to vote on your board docs thing this is challenging i'm looking forward to the day that I don't have multi multi screens. We can just talk to each other. Um, okay, 
Let's see, what is our next, our next agenda item is, we have a presentation from Mickey McFetridge. It would help if I just look at my screen and there he is sitting there. That would be my first clue of what's next on the agenda. So thank you for coming, Mickey. He has a uh, presentation for us on Title I. Well, thank you. I, I appreciate the opportunity and I believe um, she's gonna put the presentation up there on the screen for us. All right, so this evening I am going to just have a, a brief overview of Title I in Fayetteville and, and what is um, just an update on that program. Of course, Title I isn't our only federal program that we have, but um, it, it's kind of an all-encompassing program for us. Oops, you can go back a screen there for me. Back to the slide. And so we'll just kind of start in here with um, some of our, our numbers. So you can see this is a, a three-year review of our, our funding for Title I. You can see that it hovers around that 1.7 million um, area. You can see it, it, it has decreased a little bit over the last three years. Um, our, our biggest piece of that, sometimes I get a lot of questions on, well, how is this calculated in those types of pieces and there are a lot of factors when it comes to Title I calculations, but what I like to highlight for us, what we can do at the local level, um, and of course this year is a, a really big year for this, that's important is census data takes a big piece in this, in this calculation. And we still are, um, that census window is still open. And so as much as we can continue to encourage the citizens of Fayetteville to ensure that they've completed their census, um, that does help with this funding along with, with other funding we receive. Um, and then the other piece that factors in is our free and reduced um, student count. And, and we've been pretty consistent with that every year. And really, Ms. Marichek, I wanna give a shout out to her. She does a great job working with the schools to, to not only make sure that helps this funding source, but more importantly, make sure that all our kids are fed every day and and those types of things. So next slide, please. These are our K-4 campuses that are served with our Title I funding. Um, as you can see, the, the lowest percentage we serve is a 40%, and that, that is based off of that free and reduced lunch count that I had just mentioned. And so you can see ASBEL really does top out uh, district-wide as an 80% at 80% there, and then you can see our other campuses. And the next slide. That being said, Owl Creek is kind of in its own um, own band there because they are a K-6 school, they are served. Holt Middle School is served. Next slide. And then you can see Ramey Junior High, and then a new addition this year um, is Alp, and we are, they are served a little bit different than the other schools on this list. They are under what is called targeted assistance and that's mainly because Alps has, has a different setup and with their kind of their transient population from year to year, they're under a little more of a specific way that they are served with the fund. Okay, next slide please. And so these are really the, the five main ways that we serve um, campuses in Fayetteville or that they decide to utilize this funding. And so you all will in the next couple months be, be looking through their school level improvement plans again and voting on those this summer. And those plans really are the driving force for what happens with their Title I funding. Um, so you can see personnel for academic and social and emotional interventions um, they, they do use this funding for professional learning, uh, technology, hardware, and software, some instructional supplies, and then there's a required parent involvement set aside as well. Next slide. The kind of timeline for 
federal programs is a little it's, it's a little bit of its own animal it kind of runs from april to april for us so what happens is in march and april every, every year we start to to look at that school level improvement plan again um, and if you remember last year we were able to take the strategic plan that was being developed by you all and and get those uh, uh, close closely aligned with that and you'll see this summer in the next couple months i believe will be next month's consent agenda you'll see those school level improvement plan in there and you'll see that it's even more aligned than it was last year um and then june and july we'll have a district committee that'll that'll um, be dr tucker miss solans myself and um, most likely Ms. Hayward and Dr. Um, Hudson as well will um, will look at that and be on that committee and we just kind of review how those schools are served. And then in August, we receive that allocation amount. And then in September, by September, those budgets are set for the schools, kind of more concrete set to take a look at. Next slide. And then the nice thing about that school level improvement plan is that we do check it throughout the school year to make sure it is still meeting the needs of the school because we do kind of prepare that at the end of the previous school year, we need to make sure that it's actually meeting the needs of the current school year. And then as you look through there, the biggest piece is for us is, is our spending deadline for the non-salary part of title one is actually at the very end of march so this year in a way we were fortunate enough to most of the non-salary funding was spent before we went on the um ami days before school was kind of let out early so there wasn't too much funding that hadn't already been planned for or spent we did have some professional development monies that did change because those things those um conferences or those types of things that didn't happen because of COVID-19 but most of that funding had already been spent by that date so that was at least fortunate for us on that end and next slide please and then this is kind of just the final breakdown on a district-wide level this isn't necessarily how it shook out building by building but for the district as a whole you can see we were a little bit over 80% in salaries and benefits, 7% um, professional learning. You can see we had almost 10% in technology and then instructional supplies and parent involvement. So that is um, that does conclude the presentation. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to, to answer any for you. Any questions, anyone? Thank you, Mickey. You are welcome. Thank you. I assume that means no questions. Katrina, we lost you for a minute, I guess, huh? Yeah. You're yeah. good now. I, I will um, look this over and <laughs> ask questions later if I need to. Sorry about that. I don't know what happened. She had a little glitch. That's all right. Um, Okay. Oh, wait. I think Keaton looks like he has a question, but we can't hear you. There we go. Yes. Muted question. Um, thank you for your work, um, Mr. McFetridge. Um, and just kind of wondering, um, just maybe some examples of, I know the majority of um, the of Title I funds go to salaries and benefits. I think that's a uh, uh, some some degree of federal requirement um, in terms of what the different dollars can be used for, but um, just curious to hear. Um, you know, I know it's a relatively small amount of money. It looks like seventeen thousand for parent involvement. It's one percent of the one point seven million. Um, I know that's a challenge that's been kind of laid bare um, from an equity perspective over the past few weeks, and um, and and just wondering if you know there are particular um, success stories or challenges um, that have come to light over the last few weeks, and um, just 
maybe a little bit more about what, if any, flexibility we have around um, those those dollars. What sort what sort of things have we tried in the past, and whether the 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 challenges of the pandemic are bringing to light, um, you know, any any new ideas that we're being forced to consider now that that maybe um, will will adapt um, a little bit more moving forward. Um, yeah, and that's an excellent question. Um, and I will say that the 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 set aside print for parental involvement is a minimum, not a maximum. So as we look through this and as Dr. Colbert looks at those focus groups that he had mentioned, and if there are support pieces we can do as a district um, or to work with the schools, because I agree with what you're saying that it the spring was completely different as far as parent communication and all of that. The interesting piece was, um, I know speaking with a teacher from Asbel and Owl Creek in a focus group session I was in yesterday, they actually said the spring was the most parent communication they had ever had. <laughs> so they had actually had more communication with parents due to the pandemic um, than than previously. So I, I thought that was actually, it was good to hear. But um, that is a, like I said, that the 1% is a minimum. We have schools like Owl Creek um, that do have like, they use part of their funding for a liaison, a parent liaison half time. And so they actually spend more than the minimum. And so that may be a piece now that we take a look at over the summer when I meet with um, the district title one group, we'll have some of that focus data to look at as well and decide you know what are some things that we could possibly use district-wide title funding for to kind of amp up um, now that we know that school may look different next year any okay. other questions thank you you bet thank you I think that is a, an interesting point. There has been a lot more. I, I would think most teachers across the board would agree with that um, parental contact being at an all time high. One of the positives, I guess. <laughs> yeah. We try to look for those. <laughs> <laughs> we try to look for those, yeah. Um, all right, thank you, Mickey. Thank you all. Um, of course, you all know how to get a hold of me. If you have any further questions, I'll be glad to, to answer them. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks. Okay, um, we are moving on to old business and um, this month is a little bit unique because one of these items was on our agenda as new business last month with regard to the construction manager and architect recommendations. The other three items, bond resolution, the preliminary budget, and the land purchase were all um, things we took a look at at our um, workshops over the month of May. Um, so none of this is, is new information for us, but um, it is, it was not, uh, they weren't old business, or they weren't new business items last month, but um, that being said, we're going to start right off with the, the bond sale. I think we have Glenda here to present that. I don't see her, not, her name up there, but I believe yes. you're out there. Yes, I'm here. Um, actually, I'm going to turn it over to Melissa Walsh, who's here with Stevens, and um, she's going to review the documents with you and uh, just give a refresher of what was covered um, at the workshop last week. Melissa. <laughs> Hi all, yes, I've, um, I, I hope everyone can hear me. I don't know if you can see me um, or not, but um, hope you guys are doing well. I um, work with Kevin. I know, you know he, you're used to um, seeing and hearing from him, um, but let's see, I think, oh, start my video. Okay, here we go. Um, you also have to, excuse me, I have a 16 month old and so I am uh, we live in a two bedroom house and I take this from what I refer to as my clawfice. Um, so I'm sorry that that is my background. Um, but yeah, so I work with Kevin. Um, I'm out of the Little Rock office right now. Um, but you know, I 
mentioned, he mentioned to several of you, I think he's with his son who's getting surgery in um, Iowa. Um, and so, I, you know, I know we've been through this before, but just a refresher, and I believe all, you know, we've gotten all the documents and everything, so this should be hopefully smooth sailing. Um, but just to walk through everything again, um, you know, on May 12th, we went out um, for a, it entered the public market for you all um, with $173 million in bonds. This was the refunding um, of your old bonds and then uh, adding new construction. Um, it was an incredibly successful um, day for, for, for everyone. That's another positive that has come out um, of this is that the, the interest rate market is definitely in your favor. Um, we received eight bids, which is a lot. Um, you know, the size definitely contributed to that. Um, Mesero Financial was ultimately the winning bid with a 2.825. The cover bid, which is the second bid um, by Robert Baird, was a 2.857, um, which, you know, we joke it only takes one good bid. Uh, that's all you need. But it's, it's great also to frankly see that all of the other bids were really tight. They were all kind of close in line, which shows I think that the market's kind of stabilizing and, and frankly just shows that you got a really fair um, interest rate and a 2.82 is just pretty incredible. Um, so walking through what I believe it, you all have in your pocket or packet, excuse me, um, the, that's just sort of an overview of how the market's been the past 12 weeks. I think volatile would be the best way to describe that um, graph. And then the proceeds sheet, just to walk you through this, this is sort of just the cliff notes of the sale um, the issue size was $173 million. As I mentioned, this was a refunding and construction. So you were refunding your old bonds and then with a new construction amount for your projects you all have been talking about. Um, the closing date, June 11th, will be when the district actually receives the funds. Um, and then there you have a breakdown of basically what came in and then what comes out. So. We sold $173 million with $282,821.95 of free offering premium. That's essentially a marketing tactic or you know how, how the bonds were bought. That means um, some bonds were bought for more than their face value. Um, so totaling you know a little over $173 million. So that's where the money is, that's how much came in. And then the distribution is what is went out. So we refunded $56,574,538.87 of old bonds. Those were refunded. The 1.621, that's the discount. That's what Mesero, basically it's the difference between what they buy and sell them bonds for. Um, and then you'll see there the municipal advisory fee, bond council fee and rating fees, as well as the trustee escrow and agent fees. Um, net remaining, meaning that you have $114,665,831 in construction, which, as I mentioned, should be in the district's account on June 11th. Um, and I, I, if I do believe another really successful aspect of the sale is I think that's almost $3 million more million than we anticipated for the district, which is great. Um, and because the rate was so low, we actually were able to lower the payment for your annual payment. So you're getting more money for less, which is always wonderful news to deliver. Um, and as I understand it, I'll take any questions, um, but I, I believe all that is needed now is a motion um, to uh, move forward to adopt the resolution authorizing the sale of the bonds. Thank you so much for that update. That is great news um, uh, and unexpected. I mean, somewhat, we, we knew this was coming obviously, but unexpected when we, when we made this decision and we went before the community, we, we did not expect to get more than what we already thought was quite a lot. So <laughs> we are thrilled. Um, our district and our community is gonna reap huge benefits from all of that, so. Thank you for delivering such good news. Um, does anybody have any questions? Otherwise, um, I will entertain a motion um, to approve this bond resolution. I so move to approve the bond resolution. Yes. There you go. I'll second it if Megan's making the motion. <laughs> either way, either way yeah. is good. Yeah, I, I move to approve the bond resolution as presented. And I will second. 
Um, so we have a motion from Megan and a second from Tim. All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries seven to zero. Thank you for being Thank here. Thank you so your, much. What do you call your, um, My office. Yeah, I tried to do the fancy green screen, but um, wasn't working. So thank you for your background. <laughs> well, um, thank you all so much on behalf of Kevin and myself. You know, it's obviously a great joy to work with the district. Um, and we appreciate the relationship very much. Um, and congratulations on a successful sale. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Stay thank safe. You. You too. Hey, hey, Nika, I would just, I would comment that um, when we did the, um, the last very large construction and, and bond restructuring for Fayetteville High School, um, it was unfortunate that it was during um, you know an economic downturn for a lot of reasons but on the other hand uh, we likewise ended up with um, very favorable uh, interest rate and um, a very competitive environment and so um, not that we spend all of our time looking for the silver lining of all of these uh, dark clouds but um, uh, this is really a, a remarkable situation to be in and to get over three million dollars and to reduce our our uh, our note on it uh, it's hard to imagine anything coming out uh, better in terms of being able to be good stewards of district resources. I agree. Yeah. Thank you, Tim, for those comments. Okay. Um, and now we're moving on to our preliminary budget presentation from, I think, from Glenda this time. Yes, um, as you recall, as you said earlier, Amanda President, that we uh, had a pretty um, um, long work session a few weeks ago to go over the budget for the upcoming year 2021. Uh, it is a preliminary budget. As you know, those budgets go to the state, state reviews them and then approves them. Sometimes it is uh, late February. Uh, I will say I just got the approval for um, this year's budget not more than two weeks ago. So it's just a timing of when they have time to look at that. So uh, and I think probably the recent uh, occurrences have delayed some of that for them. But this is a preliminary and we can make changes uh, as the year goes on. We've talked about we wanted to maybe do a review at mid-year just to see how things are going because of the uncertainty of all that is happening right now and, um, and just make sure that we are on track for what we are projecting. So um, I will answer any questions you may have on it. Um, otherwise, uh, we are just asking for a motion to approve the 2021 budget, um, the preliminary budget, excuse me, the 2021 preliminary budget. And I just wanted to um, highlight the fact that, Glenda, you mentioned that we would have the opportunity to take another look at this. There you are. You just popped. Yeah, sorry. I didn't realize I didn't have my video on. Um, I was talking into outer space, but that's just part of, <laughs> part of 2020, apparently. So, um, uh, But that we will have an opportunity to revisit this. I think this, this budget, or I know this budget, includes the, um, the annual step raises for our teachers, but that um, once we have a better understanding of our revenue mid-year, that we, we should be able to take a look at potential raises for our teachers in addition to that step raise. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that we, we highlighted the fact that it does include an increase, but hopefully we'll be able to um, offer more. It's just, it's just the unknown is preventing us from doing that at this time, is that correct? Yes, and um, as you are correctly saying, most of our revenue comes locally. And uh, it, with the current situation, some of the tax, property taxes may be delayed uh, just for families um, having to make decisions of what maybe is happening in their household. And also our funding is based on uh, ADM, which is average daily membership. So we wanna wait to see what the school year looks like, what students, uh, show up and do a good good head count and know where we're standing at that point. We are projected to grow based on the Templeton uh, projections, but in reality, we want to uh, just wait 
considering what is currently happening to make sure that that truly is what we'll see. But yes, the budget does include a step raise for all employees uh, who are not already maxed out on the salary schedule. Okay. I think it's just, it's hard to forecast or plan much of anything right now since we're sort of, um, you know, looking at, into the dark, so to speak. Um, but I'm encouraged by the fact that we were able to just um, at least do that step raise and um, have an opportunity to look at it again down the road. So thank you for your work on that. Um, does anyone have any questions for Glenda about this budget? I know we took a pretty long, hard look at it at the workshop, um, but if anyone has any further questions, I'm sure she'd be glad to answer them. If not, I would um, accept a motion for to approve the fiscal year 21 preliminary budget. I'll make that I'll motion. Make okay. I'll second Justin's motion. <laughs> we have a motion from Justin and a second from Tracy. Um, all those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? So the budget is approved. Thank you, Glenda. Thank you. And I look forward to coming back in the uh, mid-year and hopefully we can um, make, a, make another motion for something different. So yeah. look forward to it. Yeah. yeah, we'll look forward to that as well. Okay, um, moving on to our next item of old business. This is construction manager and architect recommendations. And this has to do with the, um, as Justin talked about earlier, we, we kind of separated these projects out. So these recommendations have to do with the uh, um, FCA work um, with Ramey and Woodland changes. And I'm not looking where the mic. Um, Anyway, we'll let Megan <laughs> talk about it I was, instead of me shifting through the papers. But this does not apply. These recommendations, I guess is the easier way to say it, these do not um, include the recommendations that she'll bring up in new business pertaining to the new school and the, and the high school athletic facilities. So, Dr. Silcom? Yes, ma'am. Uh, these are for the recommendations for the projects for Leverett and Washington, Rainy and Woodland and the FCA. And now keep in mind, we have pulled some of the FCA items out for Rainy and Woodland and for Leverett and Washington, but we've broken them into three different groups. And we did talk about that in our meeting as to why we made that choice, uh, that we felt like that was important, that those had some special provisions that went along with them versus um, FCA has a lot of things that need repair or need attention to. And so our recommendations are listed as follows for each corresponding project. So it looks like you're recommending Nabholtz uh, as a construction manager for the FCA projects and for Leverett and Washington and Milestone for Ramey and Woodland and then the architects JKJ for Leverett and Washington, Architect Plus for Ramey and Woodland and Craft and Toll for the FCA projects. Okay. Um, does anyone have any additional questions for Dr. Slocum? about these projects or these uh, recommendations? Okay, if not, um, we, we need to take action on these items. Um, if someone would like to make a motion to approve the construction manager and architect for the following projects, Leverett and Washington Elementary School projects, Ramey and Woodland Junior High School projects, and the facility condition assessment outcomes. Nick, I'll make that motion. Okay. Justin has made a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second. Is that you, Tracy? Nope. No, Katrina. Okay. <laughs> Katrina, you guys sound alike. I can't see you. Or I can't differentiate. Okay, we have a motion from Justin and a second from Katrina. 
All those in favor, say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, these recommendations uh, carry seven to zero. Thank you, Dr. Slocum. Um, and, and I guess you're moving on to this next agenda, agenda item, which has to do with the land purchase for the new school. Yes, ma'am, thank you. This is for the land that we've discussed located off of Ruble Road. This will be for a purchase uh, in, in partnerships and things that we have planned with the city, which we've discussed. We are looking for maybe unique ways to be able to use some of our property in the future, along with uh, the definition of a new school in the future, which is very exciting. So I would ask for a motion to approve the purchase. Okay, any questions uh, for Dr. Slocum? Uh, just a clarification, are we, are, are we moving to uh, approve the purchase or are we uh, authorizing uh, Dr. Colbert or designee to uh, complete that process? We are, we are making a motion to approve the purchase. Okay. I, I think we're um, authorizing to execute the, a contract. Okay, then we need to change the, the motion here. Yeah, what's, we need a clarification. I'm, I'm seeking permission from the board to move forward with purchasing this particular parcel of property um, at that particular price. Um, in terms of, um, versus other selections and other uh, property purchase that, purchases that we've looked at. Um, okay, so I guess what the, the, the clarification needs, to, we just need to clarify the motion. Um, do you have, because I think the uh, procedurally we're in agreement, we, perhaps, or are we not? No. I, I'm sorry, I don't, uh, Nick, I, I just think what we're doing is we're authorizing uh, Dr. Colbert or his designee to enter into the contract based on, according to the terms presented. And okay. I think following this meeting, they will then go sign that contract. Okay. Is my That's, understanding. Do you want to make a motion to that effect? Yeah, I will. I'll make that motion. Okay. We have a motion from Justin. Uh, I'll, second. I'll second. Okay, and that was Tracy. Yes, okay. yes. <laughs> we have a motion from Justin um, and a second from Tracy. Is there any further discussion from the board with regard to authorizing Dr. Colbert to enter into a contract for the purchase of this property? Okay, if not, all those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? Okay, the motion carries seven to zero. Thank, Thank you, you, Dr. Slocum. Um, just a, a point on, on the uh, board docs that just popped up, it was worded, uh, there, was a, there was an unusual wording about the, um, the motion we just approved. It had yeah. something to do with consent agenda. Oh. Okay. Yeah, it does. It says it at the at the bottom. Oh. I recommend a motion to approve the consent agenda. I think it was just. Yeah, it's just, yeah. I see that too. But um, I'm I'm gonna change. I don't know why it is saying that. Because on actual board docs, it says something completely different. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why don't you actually go and look at the the detail of the agenda item? It says, I recommend a motion to approve the land purchase of a new school. Right, which is, which is what we decided. We, yeah. we need to change that as well. The, the motion needs to reflect what, Joe, what Justin said about what we're, we made a motion to authorize Dr. Colbert to enter into a contract for that purchase. So if you could, um, I, th I think the motion needs to reflect what was said by- I've got it updated. Okay. So this wasn't just a way to trick us into uh, agreeing to be like AMI substitute teachers next year or something, was it? 
No, sir, but if you're open to that, we also nope. have bus driving positions nope. available. Not, not in my wording here. Okay. We'll, uh, we'll let you work on that wording, maybe. Um, and it's, it's already updated. Okay. Yeah. I don't have the, the vote popping up. Right there. Can you see it now? I don't. Does anyone else? My shared screen, if you look at my shared oh, screen. I have to go do that here. I, I need a third computer. Okay, I recommend a motion to approve the land purchase of a new school. Okay, I think what we were trying to do is change the wording to reflect the motion is to authorize Dr. Colbert to enter into a contract for the purchase of land for a new school. Okay. Is that correct, everyone? Yeah. Which is different. It's 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 a little bit different. We're essentially buying land, but we're doing it procedurally correct in that way. There. So does that look right? Okay, let me go back. No, to authorize Dr. Colbert to enter into a contract. Enneagram one hitting hard right now, Madam I President. Wanted, like, we're, this I like is it. a big deal. <laughs> no, it is a really big deal. I like it. Just want you to know that you're doing great. I'm an Enneagram one, everyone. Go home and read your Enneagram books and you'll know why why we always have to follow the rules. <laughs> okay, moving on to, um, well, have we finished that? I'm not sure if we have. Yes. Okay. It should be correct now. Okay. Um, thank you, Jennifer. I appreciate it. Um, moving on to new business now. Um, and Dr. Slocum is still here waiting patiently for us to get our ducks in a row. Um, thank you. We are now going to hear um, with sort of an update from our workshop. And then um, I just wanted to make a couple comments before um, you start, Dr. Slocum. But the board, um, of course, you all are aware, um, but the board had an opportunity to hear from um, a number of applicants for these two projects, the new school and the athletic facilities at the high school that were all exceptional applicants with um, very impressive presentations. We even, I think more than one of us made a comment that we'd like to hire all of them for fun projects for all of them around the district. Unfortunately, we have hired a number of people because of our $114 million. So that's nice that we can, um, be putting a lot of these people to work and um, we were just so thrilled to have these exceptional applicants. Um, in the end, after our, our lengthy workshop, um, the board kind of asked questions and went back and forth with regard to um, highlighting um, the things, um, the specifications that we were interested in knowing more about. And then we asked you, Dr. Slocum, and your committee to come back to us with your recommendations based on that feedback and those, those presentations. And so that's what we're hearing today. And I will turn it over to you. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. We um, thank you very much, Ms. Parker. You're doing such a good job toggling between all these screens and votes. Um, so, as, as you saw from, from what we reviewed uh, as a committee, it's, it was not an easy decision for us to make. Um, we really want to make sure that we get this right, not only for, um, for the projects that we have approved, but the upcoming projects that we have. It's really important for us, and we are very excited to get started. So, these are for projects for athletics and rainy. And before we get started, I just wanted to review and remind you that what we look at is we use uh, the procurement for professional services. That was the process that our committee used 
Um, what we do with that is we really look at the evaluation of what the qualifications are. And so for those particular things, we look at the specialized experience that the firm might have. We look at the capacity and the capability of the firm to be able to perform the work um, in question that we are asking them to fulfill in terms of complexity and the ability to deliver. And Mr. Hudson mentioned this earlier, but we really were also looking for someone who had the ability to listen, to be able to take and hear multiple sets of, of people's input and then actually come back to the table with something very specific that is reflective of what the board wants and what the community wants it to look like. We also looked at the past record of performance with the firm um, and factors in terms of quality of control, ability to meet schedules, the deadlines, uh, firm's proximity and the familiarity of the area is also really important. And then we also looked at specificity on what is the relationship that we have with the person that is in charge in terms of the district's relationship? What kind of experience do they bring to the table? Um, did they follow up with the RFQ? Um, do we have any past work history with them, which serves as kind of a, a reference in and of itself? Um, were they local? Was there team detail? Um, the engineers that they selected uh, to be as part of their team? And then the superintendent uh, that, that was listed for each individual project. And so that was kind of our cornerstone where we started. And then on the next slide, Ms. Parker, are the recommendations that we made for each of the projects. So for athletics, uh, we have some demo work we've got to do with athletics. We've got some reconfigurations we've got to do with athletics. And then we also have uh, new construction going on with athletics. So it really has three different parts uh, that go along with it. So for architect, we're recommending uh, WER. For construction manager, we are recommending NAPHOLTS for that project. And then for the new school, uh, we want to do some things that are, are new and creative uh, in a new school setting that offer us, uh, it's always an opportunity to do new and interesting things. So we are recommending Lewis Architect. And for construction manager, we're recommending Milestone. Here I am. Yes, I am. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Slocum. That's exciting. Um, any questions for Dr. Slocum about these recommendations? Or input? Yeah, I'll um I'll I'll just share my my thought as I did at the workshop. Um, um just a little surprised about um the one firm that is not not local, not not here. I realize they uh, committed to. Um, uh, I'm talking about the architect firm Lewis that they committed to being here as quick as a, a possible plane flight or at least uh, the drive up. Um, and um, I still I still have that same concern. Um, rather, I, I have no doubt that they've done good work for other folks. Um, uh, at least from from what they've submitted, um, but just a little surprised that we, uh, with the uh, array of firms with a with a much stronger local uh, context, that um, that this one came to the top. But I haven't. I don't know. Um, and help me if I missed something. The I don't want to see the score sheets, but in terms of just a rubric uh, or whatever the the system was that that uh, got to the recommendation. I think that question is for you, Dr. Slocum. Yeah, I, and I probably didn't put it in the form of a question, uh, unlike my, my Jeopardy skills. Oh, well, maybe, it's, um, maybe it's not a question. Just yeah, just, just in terms of whether there was a, um, um, the, the, whatever that rubric and, and, and process by which the committee came to uh, the recommendation, because I, I, I heard uh, at least a number of us during the workshop uh, commenting on, the, on what we felt was a, a pretty strong uh, preference for a locally based uh, firm, both on architect side as well as construction. So is the is the question the criteria that we used as a committee to, when we were kind of evaluating each of the groups? Uh, yeah, I would say particularly with you know, on on the architects for for that project. Uh, I assume the rubric or or whatever the criteria was fairly similar across the board for each of these processes, each of the projects. 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, that uh, relationship, the experience, um, the follow-up, their, their references, the information we were able to, um, to kind of garner from previous projects, um, and then uh, just as a whole, our, you know, our comfort level with being able to recommend a person to kind of come forward and lead that process. And Tim, and as she, she did her presentation early at the beginning, she lists all those things. Maybe uh, Dr. Slug and we can provide that for him because she went through that at the beginning of this presentation and she listed all the things that we considered when we interviewed, interviewed those different companies. Yeah, I, I, I'll just, uh, I've, I've registered my, my thought and concern about it and, and I'll, uh, I'll uh, leave it at that. Okay, whoops, keep thinking I'm muted or not muted. Um, I think it's, it is just a, a difficult process to um, reach complete uh, consensus. And that's why, fortunately, I think um, the fact that Dr. Slocum in, included in her evaluation process a number of individuals that um, brought different levels of expertise to the product, project and um, a variety of perspectives. Um, I appreciate the time that you all took in, in looking through those things, those uh, RFQs. Uh, so we'll just, we'll just look forward to this. Actually, it looks like Justin has another comment. Can I, can I maybe ask a question? Because uh, this was mentioned in the workshop and um, I guess hearing that, I, I kind of want to know too. Uh, the, the point about Lewis that we heard from the workshop uh, discussion, I think it's maybe the discussion afterwards, was that they had the integrated mechanical engineering um, uh, on board. And I guess my question would be for Dr. Slocum, did that component of it overcome? Is that the, I think mean, maybe that's what Tim is getting at is uh, beyond the, the, uh, the four criteria that's in the professional selection, uh, statute um, was that sort of the component that made it rise to the top or was it was it something else in particular I think that also we really looked at the um, the engineering piece the civil the MEP the structural components uh, we wanted to know things like fee structures what's in-house what's outhouse and and the things that they they have to be able to bring the to the table one of the other things that brought them to the top of our list is the percentage of total workload that directly relates back to education and although um, architects may have a lot of experience in doing various buildings an educational facility is a very specific niche and so that was really attractive to us in terms of of why we brought the recommendation forward Thank you. Um, and I, I mean, I think there were, Tim, you were not the only one to kind of ask questions about that at the workshop. So I wanted to make sure the other board members who, who had, ex, you know, who had asked about that or expressed concern. Did, do you feel like your questions have been answered? Um, Nika, I was one of those that also had concerns about them not being local, since that was one of the criteria that we looked at. Um, I do, I, I realize there are many other things to look at, too, and to consider, but um, I'm with Tim. I, I was a little um, hesitant about Lewis also, just because they're not in our area. You know, it's not only is it good to have them here for, you know, feedback so that we can be present with them, but just to kind of help our community too, you know, to hire local so that we're, um, you know, I think we had some great qualified people that were local. So I was a little hesitant about this also, but I do understand there are other things they're looking at, definitely. Okay. All right, thank you. Well, we will, um, we will have an opportunity to um, think about this for the next month. And um, if you have further questions, 
um, you'll you'll have a little bit of time to get those addressed with Dr. Colbert or Dr. Slocum, um, and then we'll vote on this at our June meeting. Okay, and now we're moving on to the school breakfast and lunch price increases. Yes, and is that is that you, Dr. Slocum? Yes, yeah. ma'am. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> I just wanted to, to before we start and before I turn it over to Ms. Mirachek, um, I know we have a ton of champions in our district and you've gotten to see a lot of them do some amazing things, but uh, this woman is incredible. Uh, she has run the biggest restaurant in town during the most difficult time in our history. And I just wanted to give her snaps or props or whatever is appropriate, Zoom fingers. Um, but she is just, Wonderful, and the things that we have worked through as a team um, with Dr. Colbert's leadership and his kind of willingness to throw all the rules out the window and let us kind of start over to craft something that we've never done before in the turnaround time that we've done, like, wow, she is just phenomenal. So um, I'm going to turn it over to Ms. Mirachek with, with Zoom fingers uh, waving high. We call them in child nutrition cactus hands because you can't touch. So cactus hands to you, Ms. Mirachek. Thank you, Dr. Slocum. That's, that's really nice of you. And I'll just pass that kudos right on to my team. I mean, they're so incredible. They're doing it every day and in a moment's notice, and they've just been so adaptable. And so um, yeah, I, they, they are the true rock stars and lunch superheroes in my book. So, um, today I wanted to propose, oh, well, I think there is a, um, a Google, um, PowerPoint that has a, a few points that I'd like to cover. Um... Those are the only three documents I have. I don't think I have the PowerPoint. Sorry, okay. Allie. That's okay. Um, if you want to pull up the, the first attachment, that'll be everything you need and then some. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so um, I would like to propose uh, meal price increases across mm -hmm. the board um, for a few reasons. Um, one is um, because of the uncertainty that uh, will be just ingrained in meal service because of the, um, the pandemic and just being able to be flexible with what students need, whether it's, you know, a, 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 a remote meal service that we're doing now or it's some form of in the school building. Um, those sorts of changes are, uh, will likely have an added expense. In addition, if, um, if our current meal uh, program is any sort of picture of what it could look like no. next school year, no. we're packaging a lot more foods. And unfortunately, I, I hate to say that, but we have to do it for the safety of our students, but those things are uh, more expensive. Also, um, you know, forecasting any sort of breaks in the food supply chain, food could be more expensive. And so just wanting to be prepared on the front end for anything unexpected so that our meal service is not interrupted for our students. Um, additionally, in uh, January 2020, um, there was a, a federal um, labor, labor law update um, that changed the, the salary, um, minimum salary uh, across the board. And so we um, gave all of our cafeteria managers um, a, a, a wage increase to, to meet that, that federal minimum. So, that, so these prices for the coming school year are going to accommodate some of those changes we had to make before we knew they were coming down um, the pipe and we set our meal prices for the current school year. Um, also, just to continue to maintain our equipment and our program and make improvements as we need to do. So um, how we kind of um, review meal prices, um, I'll start with lunch, with student lunch, the full paid price. Um, that one's pretty easy because the USDA gives us a tool to, to evaluate those prices and it's called the paid lunch equity tool. So we put in last, um, last year's participation numbers uh, for the month of October and the prices 
Um, and it does this calculation for us that tells us how much we need to increase the prices. So for the full paid student price, uh, there was a 10 cent um, increase requirement. So as you can see, we have um, a price for the elementary level and then the um, secondary levels. For um, student breakfast, there are, there's no tool like a paid lunch equity tool. Um, so we use, um, federal reimbursement rates to make sure that our full paying prices are somewhere similar to what we would be getting in re reimbursement from the government for our free and reduced lunches so that those um, free and reduced lunches are not subsidizing the, um, the, the paying students meals. So um, given that and looking at um, this year's re reimbursement rates and knowing that they'll likely increase incrementally next year, we um, uh, believe that a 10 cent increase will keep us, um, you know, you know, equity across the board with uh, meal prices. For adults, um, the, the adult price is also for any visitors or students um, want to purchase a second tray. So um, I'm proposing a 10% or a 10 cent increase for breakfast and a 15 cent increase for lunches and those prices are higher than a student rate because we don't, we cannot claim those meals for reimbursement with the government. So that is like the full price of a meal without being subsidized. So um, um, based on um, reimbursement rates and the USDA also provides um, adult um, meal price minimums that districts have to charge and um, so we looked at this year's reimbursement rates and knowing that re reimbursement rates don't, don't usually come out until July and August and we need to set our meal prices by then. Before then, um, we kind of look at previous reimbursement rate increases and make a, a judgment call on what they should be for the coming year. And so um, these um, increases are in line with what we foresee the reimbursement rates being for next year. Um, it's also really, really important that these prices are priced fairly so that student meals are not um, subsidizing adult meals, just like a, a paid student meal. So, and then snack price won't change. It hasn't changed for a very long time. It's still um, a good and fair price. So, um, any questions? Thank you, Allie. Appreciate that. Thank you also for letting Faith interview you a few weeks ago. Oh, it was great talking with her. In the midst of her, um, your craziness, I didn't even ask, but it was, yeah, it was inspiring for her. Oh, so, good. I'm glad. Thank you. Um, any questions for Allie about school lunch prices? Is it appropriate to ask about just the future of the um, nutrition program at this point. I know the agenda items really about um, the price increases, but um, just wondering if um, Allie, you had any thoughts on how school lunch was um, going to look this summer um, and into the end of the fall, and um, how that might impact. Um, you know, just, um, I'm, I'm kind of curious about, um, you know, how it changed local purchasing over the spring. I know that's a focus for you and, um, and, uh, also just anticipating, you know, any waivers or any, any other, um, anything else coming down the pipeline that you're thinking about. Sure. So. Um, I did join the task force for the school reopening, so I will definitely have my ears open to what, you know, the committee is saying um, as far as what they're thinking about um, how we're going to reopen um, and then, you know, also having, um, bringing my experience to that meeting as well and proposing any, um, any suggestions that I have. Also, I've been on some national calls just um, child nutrition directors from across the country just, you know, brainstorming and what's been working for them now and what they're thinking, 
you know, down the future. I know that there are states that are further progressing to this. And so I've really just been a sponge, um, you know, to listen to what other, other people are, are trying out and also just trying to be ahead of the curve with purchasing. Um, because once something becomes like a CDC recommendation or kind of a best practice, the supply is gone. I mean, I've been waiting on my shelf stable milk for, for over a month now. Um, and so I'm just trying to stay up, uh, ahead of the curve, stay proactive and open ears, ask lots, lots of questions from, you know, to the, to the state, to the ADE, but then also asking questions to uh, the directors um, just to find any nuggets I can to report back to the district. Um, and I think, you know, we have our, our summer program now that is identical to what we've been running for the last um, month or so. Um, and so we just want to stay flexible and open to whatever the district decides, how we decide to open it, and the options we're offering students, we would mirror those sorts of options, whether it's, you know, um, what it looks like in the school building, if there are students that don't, or their parents that choose not to send their students to school, how do we continue to feed those students? Um, we will just do it. <laughs> um, and I, you know, I have the best team, so, and they are so passionate about feeding kids that it's, you know, you don't even have to ask them twice. They're like, yep, let's do it, no big deal. So I'm lucky in that way. And I did want to mention that Ms. Moralchek is doing all of this while we have displaced her out of her office and we are constructing a new facility. So minor detail, like it, she is, she is, she is amazing, which I tell her all the time. I know she's like, yes, yes. yes awesome. Thank you. <laughs> no, I was just going to make that same observation that of, of all the buildings we have to be <laughs> addressing right now that we were, making things a little bit more chaotic for them. So we appreciate you accommodating that, Allie. Well, we've been happy as clams at Jefferson. So, I mean, it's, you know, we're in that little building and we love it. It's got great light. Oh, the windows are beautiful. Yeah. Um, and really we're running around like crazy. So we don't really need an office space right now. <laughs> well, exactly. The freezer is working in the warehouse. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for all your work. and. I'm I, I believe you're, uh, you may be off contract right now also. So thanks for uh, <laughs> calling in. <laughs> oh, it's my pleasure. No big deal. Okay. Thank you, Madam President. That's all for us. Okay. Thank you. Or, unless we had more questions for Allie before we let her go. Nope. Okay. Um, we are moving on to to the um, 21 or 2122 school calendar and I think Cincy Mathis is here with that there she is hello Cincy hi um, you should have a copy of the 2122 calendar um, in front of you uh, it is pretty um, close to what we have had in the past. So I'm just gonna like let you ask me any questions. Um, but uh, I don't think we made anything, any big changes that would, you know, that I need to update you on. Okay, thank you, Sati. And we, we, it is here in our packet and we've had a chance to look at it already. Yeah. Uh, it's Friday, so. Does anyone have any questions about the calendar? We're not, I, I should have mentioned this before Allie left, but both of these items as a reminder are just new business. So we're just taking mm -hmm. a look at them this week or this month. Is, is the first day of uh, proposed day of school on this calendar, August 2021, actually Friday, August the 13th. Is that what I'm saying? Yes. I know that's that's, that's okay. as early that's as early as the state lets us. Is that right? Yes, that's as early as the state will let us. Um, we still are in the um, in that window um, of you know where we are able to start up that little bit. I think we have um, one more. I think this maybe is our last year. This twenty one twenty two is our last year um, for that. But yeah, that's the earliest we could um, start when we got together and talked about it. Um, everybody was more in favor of starting um, 
on a on a you know on a Thursday or a Friday rather than um, starting on a Monday and having that full week. Um, I think you know in most teachers, especially in the elementary schools, with some of those younger grades, don't like having that that first week of school being a full week of school. It's really challenging for those kids, and um, you know, and there and so you know this was um, the best we could do based on um, the dates uh, of 21-22, so. Thank you. Since, we, yeah, since he, sometimes these get uh, pulled out to uh, the uh, teachers and staff, uh, can, you, can you speak to that on this year? On this one, we did um, ask the teachers. We kept getting um, quite a bit of, um, input uh, as a you know as a certified PPC about fall break and what we wanted to um, let teachers know we tried to answer it and we tried to address it but we kept still getting a lot of feedback about fall break what we wanted teachers to understand is, is that if we did have the option of a fall break that that would take away those two days um, at the beginning of Thanksgiving, the week of Thanksgiving, that Monday and Tuesday. So we actually did let them um, vote on a calendar um, and so they could, you know, so that perhaps that would eliminate some of the, I mean, I'm talking about every month we were getting, you know, two to three different, different people asking, about, can we add a fall break, you know, other school districts have a fall break and, you know, we'd really like to have a fall break in the middle of, you know, um, you know, October or, you know, something like that. And so we gave them two options. We gave them a fall break option and then we gave them this calendar option, which is, you know, closer to what we have been doing in the, back, in the, in the past. And of the, I think we probably had a little over 800 um, staff members vote, both classified and certified. And um, I would say that there were about 720 something that voted for this calendar to less than 100 that voted for the other, the fall break calendar. So is that what you're asking, Justin? Yes, yeah, exactly. Thank you, Cincy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Cincy. You bet. Uh, we appreciate you. Happy yep. summer. Thank you. See y'all. Um, okay, and then, whoops, wait. Is it, no, this, I was thinking maybe this was Cincy too, but this is Tammy Tucker that's presenting um, policy 5.24, um, student extracurricular activity drug testing policy. Yes, ma'am, thank you. Um, it was my understanding that the board had asked Dr. Ben uh, previously to uh, reevaluate uh, this particular policy. And uh, we started off with Coach Jansky and did some work there and he did a lot of legwork on it. But in reading the, the policy statement and the purpose of the policy, uh, really at, it was wanting to act as a deterrent and so um, Dr. Scott began meeting with other extracurricular activity sponsors, those clubs or organizations that are ruled by AAA. And we thought if we wanted to uh, really have a deterrent, we maybe want to make that net a little wider. So we just expanded the policy to include those activities that fall under the AAA um umbrella. So it's more than just student athletes. Um, and so I, I want to appreciate, uh, send my thanks to Dr. Scott and the work that he did with those sponsors and, and just ask you to consider uh, adopting this policy next month. Okay, thank you, Dr. Tucker. Um, any questions about policy 5.24 and the changes being proposed? Nope. All right. Thank I, you so much. That's the, that's the benefit of being at the end of the agenda, I guess. Everyone's tired. At the Zoom at the end of the Zoom agenda, especially. Um, thank you for bringing that before us. And again, um, if you have further questions that arise of you as you have time to think about it, I'm sure she'd be happy to answer those. So, absolutely. 
Otherwise, uh, Dr. Colbert, do you have anything else? Yes, yes ma'am. Remember, we was going to have uh, Dr. Slogan to present an update about the partner. Oh, thank you. Okay, yes. Um, I meant to ask you about this earlier, Dr. Slocum, um, but I forgot. So we were just hoping that with regard to the parking lot expansion that we had um, voted to approve the uh, that expense, I don't know when it was, uh, at least six months ago, <laughs> well, it's probably been almost a year ago. I don't remember when we approved it, but there've been some changes and I know we're gonna hear more about that next month, but I was wondering if you could just kind of give us a little heads up about what you're dealing with there. Yes, ma'am, this is for parking phase three. And when we initially discussed this, it was actually in November of 2018, presented as one of the options, if you can believe that, which was almost two years ago. Um, and in that option, we initially uh, looked at just adding on to the road and adding some parking spaces onto that road. Um, and at that point, the price point was about 350000 It was a relatively uh, low-hanging fruit and something that we could look at. And as the conversation has progressed, um, we ended up making a, a motion in February of 2019 and then moving forward with the progression of the actual project, which has kind of brought us here uh, to this point. And, and for this particular project, what we learned is uh, we went back to 1920 and realized that we did not own the road. Uh, the road was actually uh, duly owned between uh, the University of Arkansas and Fayetteville Public Schools. And so through that process, uh, we had to actually have the city make a determination on who owned how much of the road and the percentage, the larger percentage fell to the University of Arkansas, which means that we don't own uh, that, that inlet road on Delaware. And from that point, that started conversations with uh, moving a completely different direction of not being able to utilize Delaware. So what I'll be bringing to you in June is uh, kind of an overview of what that conceptually could look like with an idea on, pr on pricing so that we can have actual tangible conversations with now that we've defined all our knowns and we, we know what we own and we know what the university owns, uh, then I'll be able to bring you some more options forward. Okay. Um... And I remember when we approved the, the expense this past school year, I believe, um, but I think based on this information, it looks like the, the cost to do that parking lot is going to be significantly different. Um, and so I just kind of wanted to give board members a little bit of a heads up on that before you come to us in June, um, just because I think we, I think obviously cost is, is one of the top three considerations there. It's not just about expanding parking for our high school, but um, given the fact that we don't have access to that road, it, it's just, we have to look at the per, per, per space cost, which is a lot more than we thought it was gonna be. So, um, and I, I realize you don't have those exact numbers right now, but I didn't also wanna spring it on people next month. So thank you. For that yes ma'am thank you okay anything else that that i forgot dr colbert or no that's it okay <laughs> we did it <laughs> or that any anybody else thinks i forgot or they forgot no okay then if there is no further business this meeting is adjourned thank you all for your time thank you Stay Thank safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye, everyone. Thanks. Thank Bye. you.